Hi friends! Today I'm here to do my wrap up for the month of November. In the month of November I read a whopping total of three books with a total of 1,120 pages which is actually more than I read the month before so no complaints. As always we start with our lowest rated and work to the highest rated and also this is kind of a wrap up for both the Buzzword-a-thon and the Contemporary-a-thon as well because I read two of these books for those two readathons. so let's get to it shall we. The first book that we're going to talk about is The 18th Abduction by James Patterson and Maxine Petro. This counted for both the Buzzword-a-thon which was numbers and for the Contemporary-a-thon because it's a contemporary and I read it during that weekend. This is the 18th book in the Women's Murder Club and I gave it a 2.25 out of 5 stars. I have been wishy-washy about this series for quite a long time and have really just come to the conclusion that I need to stop reading it. Originally my favorite thing about the Women's Murder Club was the Women's Murder Club and this one basically just had like 20 seconds of one of the girls and I think one of the other ones was mentioned a couple times and I don't even know that the fourth girl was even mentioned at all. It's not really working for me anymore and I've read some reviews of the 19th book which is the Christmas book and have really horrible things about the 19th book so I just think that I need to be done with the series and to let it go and to move on with my life and not be so obsessed with wanting to read these and hoping that the next one will be better because I don't think they're going to get any better. Um, I had a lot of thoughts about this book. As always, all of my full reviews on Goodreads will be linked in the description box below so that you can get my full thoughts on anything that you want to get full thoughts on and occasionally there's even spoilers in there that I don't like to do in these videos. The next book we're going to talk about is Rebel Girls by Elizabeth Keenan. This was an arc that I had that came out forever ago that I finally finished reading. It follows a girl um, in the 90s at a Catholic school and her younger sister is accused of having an abortion over the summer which can essentially get her kicked out of school because it is a Catholic pro-life school because your choices that you make after hours have control over your schooling apparently. <sighs> I know that's how the real world works but it's just so dumb. And so essentially the book follows the girls and their friends trying to come together and to kind of defeat the rumor mill and about a lot of other things. Girl hate and things like that. Um, I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This was not part of any readathon. I read it early on in the month. For me, the pace is what kept this from being rated higher. It was pretty slow throughout the majority of the book and I don't feel like there were a lot of parts that were just like really gripping and exciting. It was definitely a book more about its ideals rather than about the action of the plot which isn't bad it's just not my favorite thing ever. I like things that have a good pace and this kind of felt slow through most of it but I do think that if you can push through the pacing issues I think that there's a lot of really good things in the book that are what make it enjoyable to read. It has really great sisterhood vibes not just the two sisters but also their friend group and the girls that kind of join them throughout the school year um, to stand up against the bullies who are trying to get this younger girl kicked out of the school by spreading lies about her. And also while it is a book about pro-choice and pro-life, I think even though you can clearly tell where the author stands on that, I think it is a very good mix of the two. I think it is really great at expressing that if you are pro-choice that means giving someone the choice to be pro-life and that you can't judge them for making that decision because you are pro-choice which means you're giving them the choice to be pro-life. And while there are some really nasty horrible people who are pro-life in this and are shown in a very negative light that are pro-life. There are also some pro-life characters who are shown in a really great light and in that they are okay with people being pro-choice because they want people to make up their own decisions and their own minds and they realize that not everyone is going to have the same beliefs that they do. And it's similar with the pro-choice people. I think that in the start of the book especially the main character is very much pro-choice and tries to shove her pro-choice beliefs on her little sister who is pro-life and as the book progresses she learns that her sister is allowed to have her own thoughts and her own feelings and and to make up her own mind about whether she's pro-choice or pro-life. So I think that there were a lot of people that kind of DNF'd the book early because of her trying to push her beliefs on her sister um, but the whole point of a book is for the characters to grow and you'll never know if they grow if you 
cut them down, something like that. Pocahontas thing about it, I don't know. If you stop reading the book early on, then you'll never know if the characters grow into decent human beings, and sometimes they don't. But in this case, they did, and I think that it really moved in a great way. The homecoming scene at the end of the book, I cried my eyes out. It was beautiful. It hurt, but it was a good hurt. I definitely recommend this book for anyone that um, has uh, gets nostalgic over the 90s because it's full of 90s nostalgia. And it also um, has a really great message, I think, about pro-choice and pro-life and about being for other women rather than against other women. A lot of things like that. So I think it's a I think it's a really interesting book. I probably will buy a physical copy of it. I'm very happy to have read it and I probably will reread it. And then the last book that we're going to talk about is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. I read this for the Buzzwordathon, which I considered nothing a number. I, I really had to pull this one out my ass, guys. Um, but... <laughs> Nothing is a quantifier for zero, which is a number, and so I am counting it as part of the buzzword-a-thon. Sue me. This is the finale to the Folk of the Air series. It is book three. The series as a whole follows Jude, her twin sister, and their elder sister, elder half-sister, who are witnesses to their parents' murder and by their elder half-sister's father, and he essentially takes them back to fairy and raises them as his own children, which is fucking weird. And the series as a whole follows the girls trying to figure out their place in fairy and where they will be when they grow up because they're not really keen on going back to the human world. They've kind of grown up in fairy and they're used to it at this point and that's kind of where they want to continue their lives even though it's kind of shit there. Um, their father is very respected and so for the most part they have really good lives there. They're not great as far as like being picked on and things like that but while the world is scary they do have a lot of things that they wouldn't necessarily have in the human world. So their life isn't horrible but it's not great either. This series as a whole I think does a really amazing job of multifaceted characters. While sometimes they're real dumb, don't get me wrong, Jude is a real dumbass sometimes. She trusts people that she shouldn't trust, she does things she shouldn't do, trusts people who tell her not to trust them, but I think a lot of the characters, like for instance the fact that their adopted father murdered their parents, but he loves them in his own way and is it's a really strange thing and it's a lot of the characters are like that. A lot of the characters are very mean characters but yet they love people and it's not like in a... I don't think it's in a toxic way. I think it's just in a fey way. I think that that the fey is just a more brutal type of people. I wouldn't recommend it, you know, that you live your life that way as a human who exists in the real world but for a fantasy book I see nothing wrong with that. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars if I had not mentioned that before because I'm not sure. I think that this is a really great wrap-up to the series. I think it had a great conclusion. I really liked the ending as far as like where some of the characters ended up at. I really want to see some of that in the future. The battle itself was very anticlimactic and I feel like that's what kept it from being a five star book for me. I probably would have rated it a little lower if I had thought about it. I, I may in the future lower the rating. I don't know. I don't know. I want to keep it where it's at but I also want to lower it but I also want to keep it where it's at. It's it's like, I just, I feel like the battle could have been, could have had a little more pizzazz, could have had a little more theatrics to it. Final battle was very easily won. It was in a predictable way, which made it even worse. And, and I feel like it was just so much build up to that. And I don't know if part of that is because they pushed the book to come out like four months early or what the case may be, but I don't know, maybe that's what she's always envisioned the ending being and it just wasn't as big of a finale as we all had expected it to be. But the rest of the book I think was very solid. I think it was just that final battle was very short and very anticlimactic. But I like the way everything ended up and I like where everything ended and I like what happened. I just wish it would have been more something, like some more death and murder and destruction, just a little bit more death and murder and destruction, that's all. So those are the three books that I read in the month of November. Again, if you want to see a full review, they'll be linked in the description box below um, for my full reviews on Goodreads. I'm hoping to read a whole lot more in December, so hopefully December's wrap-up will be extensively long, A Girl Can Dream. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and bonus videos on the weekends, so if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!